What's up guys and gals? My name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with another episode of Mountain Blade Vorband. In the previous episode we had done some stuff. We've been doing a lot of clerical work lately and so what we want to do in this episode is I was kind of taking a look at your comments and some of the advice that you guys had for how I should be running my own kingdom and I'll, I'll freely admit that that's one of those things that I'm just not very good at. And so in the first place what we need to do is we need to find somebody to be our steward I suppose because you guys had said that there were going to be options missing if I didn't have an actual player character, one of the main characters as a steward, if I was just using like a generic peasant to do the job, that's simply just not going to work. It's not going to work at all. So let's go to Ravodden and see if we can find anybody in the tavern. I was already over here just a minute ago to buy some food. Ah, there's Bunduk. Okay, so we'll take Bunduk and I guess he can be... Bunduk doesn't get along with a couple people in our party, but I don't really care about that. All I want him to do is be a steward, and so... Oh, he's not happy. Okay, well, I talked to him just a second ago. What are you doing, pal? What are you doing? I wanted you to join up. I'm not wasting your time. I'm trying to pay you money. I'm trying to give you cash, homie. I'm trying to make your life better. I'm trying to advance your status in the world of Calradia. Right now, you're just a barroom drunk, and tomorrow you could be a steward in a room full of food, which, as I understand it in medieval times, is at slightly kind of a premium. I mean, not a lot of people have food during this time period. Food? A commodity. Not one of those things that's, well, it's a commodity in certain places right now, but anyways, it's not a commodity in the modern life. First world problems, I guess. Let's see here. Although I suppose statistically that might prove to be more false than I would say in the first place. But anyways, we're not here to talk about social issues. We're here to play Mountain Blade Vorband. So let's get off the soapbox. I'm saying let's because it feels better if I include you guys along with me. But I'm going to get off the soapbox. I have no idea where Mathelda's at. That's one of my big concerns from the last couple days. I've kind of let the game run for a little bit. And it is a little bit tired, its legs are aching a bit, but one of the things I've noticed as it's been running is that... That was a really bad joke, by the way. Why are you staring at your fridge, running? <laughs> Anyways, um, where am I here? I've lost my own train of thought. I haven't seen Mathel in quite some time, and that's really sort of a... Oh, they took Dirham, too. God. Nords is just on a warpath right now. They are just stomping out everybody. Who are they at war with? Let's have a look here. We're going to take a look at the factions. They should be at war with a bunch of people right now. They're fighting with Rodox. Whenever a kingdom tends to get like really big like this, what you'll notice is all the other AIs are like, oh, screw that guy, and they all get together and they just like pound on him until he's tiny again. And that's what I'm hoping will happen. They're at war with the Nerd Kingdom, and the Kingdom of Nords has gotten the worst of the fighting. That's me. Me versus an entire kingdom. That's hilarious. I guess we're more beefy than we thought. We are the medieval Rambo, or I guess the Ramba, since we're a female. We have an Innie instead of an Audi. Let's see here. We've got... They're at war with Rodox, and I'm sure Rodox has been kicking the crap out of them. They have no issues with Vagirs, although Vagirs is kind of pining for war with them right now, so we may get lucky. I'm hoping that by the time the war ends with Rodox, Vagirs will be ready to take a swing at them. And while Vagirs is not strong enough to win by themselves, at that point, they'll be attacking in the same vicinity that we'll be attacking in, and we might be able to, like, snipe some castles or something. I would absolutely love to take, like, Iruma, for example. So let's say if they knocked over Iruma, Nords did, I would take Iruma. If they knocked over Slezk or Ismeral or any of these, I would be Johnny on point. Johnny on the spot to make sure that that was mine rather than theirs. Now, we can't go to a lot of the capitals because we are, like, an outlaw. We're public enemy number one right now. And we are in Nordic territory, which leads me to believe I should probably keep my head down. Bulaban's probably going to get raided while we're out and about as well. Bulaban has just been having a really, really bad time. It's been like a top-tier arena player just getting raided all day long. Let's go to Nara here. And we'll check the tavern for anybody that might be able to do anything useful for us. And it looks as though there's a belligerent junk. No, the belligerent drunk. I'm going to smack him in the head before he even opens up the fight. That's what happens when you pick a fight with me. Never agree to a fair fight. <laughs> That's copyright, Splattercat 2014. Anyways, I should probably buy some more food while I'm out here because we do have a pretty sizable army. More food! Put it in the bag. There we are. Good. And so we'll go back now. And what do I want to do now? Let's continue looking for a... T yeah, I mean, that's going to be like the quest of the day is finding ourselves a steward. In? Ah, there's Deshavi. Are we full up on people right now? Before I talk to her and she locks me out, okay, we've got one space right now. A singular space. And so in the worst case, did I accidentally recruit somebody on my way in the door? Because I am pretty renowned at this point. I mean, we could basically just recruit people with our aura of both stink and fee manliness. But anyways, let's hire Deshavi. 
And we're gonna pull like an all the single ladies right here. I mean, at the moment, we are running a kingdom that you might expect Beyonce to be running. Everybody in our kingdom- God, we are sequestered to hell and back. That is not good for us. But anyways, we've got ladies running everything in our kingdom right now. We're the queen. Our ma- uh, the sultanate- What?! What did I do to you, you dicks? Oh, man. This is gonna be weak. This means I gotta sit around and defend from another group of armies. Captain, no offense, but I'm a bit tired. It's been like a half a day, man. How short is your temper to where in like eight hours you can't stand somebody? Tell Deshavi you have my support and she should hold her tongue. There we go. Let's continue. She's going to be a steward in just a minute anyway, so who cares? Let's talk to our steward. He's inside here. And we're going to have him retire as the minister. And then from there, Deshavi will be the new minister. So that means we're going to leave... And once we leave and come back, Deshavi should be in place, as I recall. Yeah, there she is right there. Although she hasn't swapped out of her nasty-ass clothes. Those are field clothes. You are inside my castle looking super nappy right now. How about you put on some real clothing? How about that? At this point, there are no particularly urgent matters which require your attention. Is there anything you want to do? Well, I suppose... So we can't unify our castle at all right now. Let's dispatch an emissary to Nords, and we should enter a truce. And who's going to be the, but also somebody who's persuasive? Do I have anybody that's persuasive? Let me go ahead and take a look here. Got to go through everybody's talking skills. I get the feeling I've been kind of, yeah, so there's eight charisma right there. With Nizar, how's he? did I already do Nizar? I think I did. Are they wearing the same armor? They're not. Okay, so I'm getting myself confused with everybody's helmets on. I'm getting confused about. Uh, let's see here. I want to go to. Let me see your skills. Twenty-five intellect. Not. I mean, technically he could be really good at persuading, but since it's a personal skill, I haven't really been giving it to anybody. Seems like one of those things that might be a terrible idea, giving one of your party members a personal skill. But it's one of those things that rolls over on you in the late game. Hopefully one of these guys will have some hangover points from before. Nope. He's got an extra point that we haven't assigned, though, so I should probably do that in the future. Borcha, please don't... You guys are killing me right now. Alright, well, if we need an emissary, I suppose I'll start specking somebody towards emissary skills. Maybe Lazalit. And we'll start giving him persuasion. He's been being a warrior since the early game, but from now on, I mean, he's not at such a high level where he's going to stop leveling up. We can continue giving him some skill points into persuasion as time goes along. He'll be like our full-time guy. Although, he's also a noble, so I think I was thinking about making him into... I don't know what I want to do right now. I don't know, guys. I just don't know. Borsha appears as though he's got skills. Maybe I'll give him some persuasion. I realize I just wasted a point on the Zalit. I can reset it through the readme file if I want to, but I probably won't cheat. We'll send Borcha for now. Borcha's already got intellect anyway, so it'll work out. Two Huskarls. Turn them into a bunch of footmen. We've got a bunch of... I've been riding around a bit in between episodes, so I feel like I've probably got a lot of people who are ready to be upgraded. She'll make some more men-at-arms. We shall make some Vagir infantry. The Nord Warriors will become there. The guards will be nice because they've got giant hack axes, or haxes, as I like to call them, the haxors, and they destroy people's shields really good. So that's one of the things I do like about the top tier Vagir infantry. But beyond that, they're not quite as good as. They're like baby Huskarls, basically. They're almost as good as Huskarls, but not quite because they don't skirmish. So, you know, it's one of those things you don't find yourself using very often. We've got a bunch more skirmishers ready to go. Trained crossbowmen, which are now becoming veteran crossbowmen. Very, very nice. They are good. We'll step on out of here, and let's dispatch an emissary to see if maybe we can forestall the war with Nords, because we do have a lot of people declaring on us right now. Strangely enough, for like no reason, so let's send somebody out to Nords. They'll enter into a truce. We're going to send Borcha. And so I don't know how long that takes. My assumption is that it's probably going to be a little while before we do it, but it's all good. We've got time for the foreplay anyways. Got Bula Bon ready to go. They are still fighting with me. So with Radun, we'll run him all the way back to Qdan possibly. And then we need to be on the lookout for any random lords from the Serenid Sultanate. Are they at war with anybody else? That's another thing that's good to be appraised of. So let's take a look and see the Serenid Sultanate. They're at war with Nords. 
So they declared on both of us simultaneously. Or wait, what? Oh, they declared on Nords. Oh my god, I've been sitting around this entire time. I'm an idiot sometimes. Sometimes I just look back at what I've done, and I'm just deeply ashamed of myself. I feel as though I've wet the bed right now. No harm, no foul. That just means there's one less thing to be worried about. We'll make peace with Nords, and I am going to keep an eye out for sniped castles along the edges. Nords offers us a peace agreement. We will accept that. We could actually potentially take Radagir. They do have a lot of veterans in there, but we have a lot of veterans too. I think we would really want to come back with our A team though. Right now we're not running an A team for a siege, we're running kind of a B team. Our kingdom would be a tad spread out, but it would allow us to get a new vassal. Interesting, interesting. What is Vagir's doing right now? That's the other thing that I'm concerned about is now I've got to pay a lot more attention to the political game going on. Vagir's is at war with Oh, they may be at war with Nords. I'd already talked about that, but nobody else right now. Well, it may be in our best interest then to just kind of follow people around and see what happens. And, well, boss, at last I found you. I've returned from my mission to Kingdom of Nords. In general, I'd say King Ragnar wishes to be at peace with Mad Dog McGriddle so as to pursue the war against the Serenid Sultanate. Ragnar says that your current truce should suffice. Welcome back. Okay, good. So that worked out way more quickly than I had expected. I thought that was going to be one of those long-term things that we had to dedicate over the course of the game. Now we could, technically we could declare on Vagir's. And I don't think that would put us in any sort of bad position. They do tend to have a whole lot of archers, though. Their stuff tends to be a lot harder to take than, say, Nord's. So it may be worthwhile to snipe that castle right there. Yeah, let's get ourselves into trouble. I know we just declared peace, but they're not going to redeclare on us. I don't think they will anyways. Let's go to the garrison. Let's get ourselves a siege force, like a force that's really built for knocking down walls. So I'm going to put all of the crossbowmen in here for now. The mercenary horseman, obviously we don't want him. Nord veterans and Huskarl is definitely what we want. Crossbowmen, absolutely what we want. Swati and footmen, we'll convert them to men-at-arms. We do need a lot of archers for this, so I suppose what I'll do... Usually the best way that I find to do this is just to kind of like put everybody up in here. And I am going to use the control key for this because I don't... The ticky noise is going to be overridden by the ease of putting tons and tons of guys back into the base like right this second. So let's throw all of them in there. Obviously I don't want to siege castles with knights because... They're just not quite as good as some of the other siege units we could be bringing along. And my guess is that we've probably got a bunch of, like, Huskarls or something in here around somewhere. Yeah, 25 Huskarls right there. That's what I thought. So we've got a bunch of Huskarls already hanging out in here. I'm going to leave my B team back at the base to just kind of hang out. And then we'll take everybody from the top tier with us to wipe out the base. So we've got 8 Huskarls. We want to bring these 25 with us. So we've got 33 Huskarls now. We want the Hired Blades, obviously. I think I'm going to bring along the Marksman. I'm also going to bring along, we've got 88 men right now. Where are my sharpshooters at? 26 sharpshooters. There they are. And so we are now currently maxed out. And I think this is going to be a force that could easily knock down those walls. So let's go find ourselves some peasants to oppress. And once we beat up some peasants... We'll try and conquer this castle. Peasants come around every so often, so if you're wondering how the peasant mechanic works, I realize it's kind of late in the playthrough for me to be talking about things that buff the gameplay or being ta like talking about tutorial elements, because if you're still hanging around at the Nerd Castle at this point, I'm willing to bet you probably know quite a bit of stuff about Mountain Blade and you're just watching it for the playthrough at this point. Where are my peasants at? There's one. There's a pillow. Okay, so the villagers travel in between the capital areas and the smaller villages and the castles. What they do is they increase the prosperity. Oh, they outran me. Little bastards. Almost harvesting season. And then once you do that, you can just leave. Why does Lady Mathild... Oh, because we're beating up like her people or something? That's weird. Alright, well that's new. Mathild is now angry at us. But what we can do is we can siege Radagir without any fear of like 
repercussions. So let's besiege the castle. And we're going to have to build a tower, which is lame. It's going to take 54 hours, so let's just sit around for a little bit. Let's pull up a chair by the fire and just hang out. I don't know. I... Vagir's has declared war against the Kurgeats. That could also work out. I'm going to reject the peace offering because I'm at an advantageous position right now where I'm able to do that. What is that right there? What is that? Is that Jarl Harald? Dashval, a bunch of people coming in right now that are a little bit beefier than I had wondered. We could probably take them, looking at their troop composition, but it would be costly. Let's step on out for a little bit. I'm going to watch the war with the Kyrgyz with some interest. So let's hang out in their territory. Yeah, we'll accept the peace agreement. So there it is. We've gained right to rule, and we've made peace with them. And that should return. Oh, what are you doing, Tribadon Noyan? What's up, buddy? I don't know you. I don't feel you. You better get up out of my land. Okay, so I just wanted to see what that option would do. I wasn't going to accept it if it went through. I wish to make peace. Since he was hanging out in our territory, I feel the need to punish him. So let's punish him. I'm not going to... Well, I mean, I could possibly... Give orders, considering I'm not running a cavalry force right now. I'm going to have everybody follow me for now. And... Before we pick any... Oh, I was going to try and take that little hillock right there, but it looks like they're riding out on me. Uh, I suppose we could go for a late game reverse hill defense then. And we'll go like right there. Continue to have the cavalry follow me. And I apologize if my keyboard clicks are louder in this episode. I bought a mechanical keyboard, which is like one of those weird things. I've never owned a mechanical keyboard before. And so one of the things I will say about buying a mechanical keyboard is that it feels like my fingers are being caressed by the loving tresses of clouds made out of cotton candy and smiles. Like I never realized how comfortable these keyboards were until I used one. And so one of the things I will say is if, the, you, if you've been on the fence about buying like a nice mechanical keyboard, go do it. Just don't even think about, oh, I just got speared. And I kind of wanted to play around on the edge right there. I'm going to send the infantry in right now since it appears as though our initial skirmishing has pretty much battered them up. They are looking absolutely delicious. If we were to fry them in some oil, I think we probably would end up with kind of like a golden crispiness. Like you would do for maybe shrimp. Or maybe a delightful bout of the fried chicken, which is one of my favorite things in the entire world. Fried chicken, amazing. I love fried chicken, especially if it's homemade by somebody like knows how to make fried chicken, like grew up making fried chicken. Woo! It'll be so good. It'll be so absolutely amazingly good. I figure with the advent of KFC, other people have started to eat fried chicken as well. That's, I hope you have. I mean, I would feel really, really bad for you. If, if fried chicken hasn't made it to your corner of the world yet, I would start, like, writing your politicians and being like, listen, we should probably get some fried chicken up in this bitch because I am really considering leaving if we don't get it very soon. That is the... I would be... I would be pretty... I would be tactful, but I would also be forceful about it because it is a thing that I feel like the average first world human life needs. Like, if you don't have fried chicken, what do you have, my friend? What do you have? Let's go to Q-Dan and get ourselves... That would be an amazing... I was just thinking about this just for a second, but if you were from Qdan and you were a Q-tip vendor, that right there, the marketing almost writes itself. Buy Q-tips from Qdan, the Qdan Corporation, providing you with all of your ear-waxing needs. Oh, God, don't throw that at me. I'm reliving my days in the musical career. Oh, God, don't throw things at me. You're just going to sit there? Is that how this... Oh, no, he's behind me, too. I may get robbed. Oh, they fell back. He panicked. Where's the other guy? I saw a fourth. There he is. And down he goes. God, that one was nasty. They came up behind me like... It, yeah. Well, I was going to make a nasty... I was going to say something nasty right there. But I'm going to let it go. PG-13. That's how we keep it here at the Nerd Castle. Because I am family friendly. Like, every now and again, I get emails from, like, eight-year-olds and stuff. So I'm just like, Ugh, I got to rein it in. I definitely got to rein it in. I got to be careful. Like, I realize I've already said bitch at this point, And I've kind of ruined my own efforts here. But, we don't stick to the missive too hard. It's more of a guideline. It's a pirate's code. It's pirate's code. It's all good. Let's see if we can't find... Yeah, you've got sausages. I'll take sausages and fish, my friend. 
I will take everything that you have right now. That is some dirt cheap iron, so I may try and sell that the next time we're at any place that buys iron, I guess. Let's go hang out down in the Kyrgyz territory and see how this goes. Somebody declared on them. I don't know if they're going to make good on that threat. Sometimes the AI just declares war on other factions and... Wait, what? No, I don't want to make peace with you. Oh, I was clicking to move and then... I don't like this. I mean, luckily there's peasants all over the place. And so I can just like oppress them outright and just be like, peasants, come here. I want to give you, want to give you candy. And then they're like, no and then I beat him up and then we're good to go and so now we're technically at war again what's Ikemer doing right now if I could take Ikemer that would be a really really good thing for me they have a lot of horse archers I've heard that they're okay on defense because they have so many archers that are like high tier we may take a look at Tulbuck though just in case so they have 105 horse archers and 53 lancers the lancers are not so great but with them on the defense, I don't know if that's going to be a fight that we can potentially win. I'm just not good at sieges, guys. So I'm always a little apprehensive about doing any of these things here. Kind of th like throwing myself into the fray. There's Tolga down here. I mean, Kyrgyz just got declared on by who? Vagirs. So I don't know if Vagers is actually going to do anything about this. It could potentially be worthwhile to bait a war with the Kyrgyz. I'm sorry, it could be worthwhile to bait a war with the Vagers after they take one of these, just like be sort of negative with them, like beat up one of their lords and then conquer it right after they take it, kind of being an opportunist. And then we'll have Ikimur and Sungeche. I'll give Ikimur to myself, and then I'll give the castle to, like, Lazalit or somebody once we have a new vassal. And at that point, I'll give these two to me, and then I'll give that to Lazalit. Or maybe I'll give that to Matheld and that to Lazalit. I don't know. But we need a capital city right now. We may even get... I mean, this doesn't appear to be, like, a very land-dense location. We may get Tolbuk out of it, too. And then Tolbuk might have Ada Kulun. I think that might be how it distributes. Getting ourselves a capital, though, is, like, really a good strategic position to be in for the future of the game. Seeing as we're not at war with anybody right now, let's have a little bit of a ride around. Looks like Swat I'm sorry. It looks like the Nords are riding out on the Saren is pretty hard. I don't know how I don't know why nobody's able to stand up to Nords right now. It's very, very strange. It may have been a better idea to maintain the war with Nords and then continue sniping their stuff as they come down here to beat up. Are they still at war with them? Because from what I understand, our faction may still be like minus three. Oh no, that evened out, okay. Well, Let's look out for any location that's under siege. Anything they might be trying to snipe. Nudar looks safe. Mechen has been looted, which means they're coming up this way. Oh, they've already made peace. That was a really, really short war. That was like almost... That wasn't even really... It was just kind of like they kissed softly. And if you put in... You know that scene from Tangled with the guy who has the little collective figurines? I forget his name. And he makes them two kiss. That was like... If I had to describe that war, that little tiny kiss right there would be exactly how I would describe this war. Like, nothing really happened right there. Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot of openings right now for us to accomplish anything. Nobody's dedicating to the cause of actually attacking anything. I mean, I should find Matheld. Let's have a look around and see if we can't locate Matheld. And if we can locate Matheld, I think... I'll just follow her around for a bit and protect her from whatever happens. She's not in our base. Can I question to figure out where Matheld is at? Like, how do I figure out where Matheld is at? Because I feel like at this point I need other lords to come and help me with stuff. I don't see any option to, like, find one of my vassals. 
And she could just be riding off like anywhere right now. I mean, I don't know if she patrols through Nordic lands. I've seen her down here a couple times. She may be captured by some bandits or something. Like, there could be a lot of things that have gone wrong right here. There are a ton of steps bandits down here. I'm looking for her tracks at the moment, but I just don't see them. She's vanished into, like, thin air. If we really wanted to play risky, we could fight with Sanjar Khan right now. Forty-four looters? That's a huge group of looters. I don't want to fight with you looters. I just want to find Mathel. If you've seen Mathel, I'd be okay with this. She may have been captured. We aren't at war with anybody, though, so she should come back eventually. There she is. Lady Mathel's party. So let's follow her around. And we're just going to do as she does for now. Anywhere she goes, we'll kind of help her level up and do her thing. Because one of the things I've noticed is that, like, your your vassals don't do a very good job at keeping themselves, like, undamaged. At least when you've only got one of them. I feel like I've probably got to hit the sweet spot of having, like, three or four vassals. Technically, I could give my castle to another person and have two vassals. And then when I marshaled, I could potentially have, like, an extra 50 to 100 guys. That might work out pretty well for taking some of these castles. Because I do feel as though we're right on the edge at the moment. With regards to what we can accomplish in our aggressive attempts. Like with our territorial aggression, I'm limited by the amount that I can field at the moment. That was a terrible choice of strike. Never go overhand when somebody's riding down on you. You always stab. Or try and sidestep quickly and... Oh, what's happening here? I guess we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Oh, and my horse has been thrusted. I like to say that as I imagine Lord Cornwallis would say it. Just, it has been thrusted. You know that that guy had to sound posh as hell. His name was Cornwallis. I mean, that was the one guy in American history that I was just like, that dude has a name that is just like banging. Like when I imagine what Lord Cornwallis's name sounds like, it, or I'm sorry, when his voice, it had to just be like booming and bassy and also just like, we must go and fight. We must go to the castle. I mean, I don't know why he had, like, a weird roll of the tongue right there. That's just kind of one of those random things that I did. Oh, good. And that's going to make her happier with me, too. I could do some manhunters right now. I don't care that much, though. And so that means that Mathel has not lost any units. Which is good, because she already doesn't even have a unit to begin with. Because she's a lady, just like us. Let's go buy some more food. I've got some dried... Eh, I don't want the pork. Nope, don't want the pork. I do want the fruit and the cabbages, though. I'll take all this stuff. Very, very good. So I think this is probably a great place to break off this episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle. As we just kind of rode around for a little bit and got a feel for the politics of the land, now that we're playing with this respect, we've got to kind of keep our ear to the ground. We've got to pay a better amount. We've got to pay more attention to, like, what's going on globally rather than just riding around killing people over and over and over again. We've got our land back, which means we're making money. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and farewell.